was never a condition of our arrangement. I have altered the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Furthermore, I wish you to wear this dress and bonnet. This was never a condition of our arrangement. I have altered the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Here is a unicycle. You will ride it wherever you go. What? I'm not riding the f***ing unicycle. I have altered the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Stellaris Developer Diary 248 is out this week. We are going to be looking at more holdings. We're going to be diving into the new Prospectorium, as well as looking at the three specialist vassal types. We're also going to be looking at a bunch more holdings, and we are also getting some new concrete information on the five new origins coming in Overlord, so stick around if you want to find out about that. Before we do dive in though, I do want to quickly bring something up. Now, just yesterday I asked on Twitter, uh, basically I asked what would be happening with player-owned AI vassals. That is, if you are a player and you vassalize an AI empire, what will be happening for that AI empire's bonuses? Because in the higher scaling difficulties of the game, the AI will get higher and higher bonuses, all the way up to Grand Admiral, where they get massive bonuses to stability, resources from jobs, etc., etc. Now, a lot of people have been worried, and there were comments posted last week in the video I made about Dev Diary 247, as well as Dev Diary 246 when they announced Overlord. There was a lot of concern about the vassals being underpowered from a player perspective if they lost their AI bonuses, because at present, any player-owned AI vassal will lose their AI bonuses. Well, you don't need to worry because Eladrin, the game director, jumped on in and replied to my tweet and basically he has said that the AI empires, if they become the vassal of a player, will keep their AI bonuses, however they will get scaled down about one tier. So instead of being Grand Admiral, they will just get Admiral level bonuses. I hope that can put the concerns of quite a few of you to rest, but I just thought I'd bring you that important piece of new information. Without any further ado though, let's dive in and find out what's going on in this week's Dev Diary. First, the developers do realize that keeping track of all of your subjects and everything going on with them would be very difficult under the current contact section that we have. To that end, they have created a new panel, a new panel uh, adjacent to contacts, and that is the agreements panel. The agreements tab will show all of your vassals uh, or all of your overlords vassals if you are a subject and it will let you examine the terms of the agreements. It also lets you know whether or not you are taking full advantage of the number of holdings you could have and lets you get more details on subsidies or tithes through tooltips of these terms. Additionally, it will provide you with a convenient way to go to the negotiation screen that they showed off last week. Now there is a lot to unpack here in this image. First and foremost, I am seeing an XP system very similar, it looks like, to the Federation XP system where you get to level up your Federation and the benefits from your Federation over time. This was already alluded to last week in the Dev Diary and a lot of people thought this was the way they're going to go and it definitely looks like that is the case. We can also see here, uh, I get to see a good and quick summary of all of the terms of your vassaldom or vassalage, as well as the resource contributions. And I assume we'll get to see in which direction those go to, the holdings, etc., etc. Last week, they revealed the names of the three specialist empire types. Two weeks ago, we got to see their icons. Now we got their names. Those are Bulwark, Prospectorium, and Scholarium. These specialist empires are an advanced form of subject contract that will excel at certain tasks but be very deficient in others. The three specialists are, as I've said, Bulwark. Now that will be a bastion of defense that leaves basic resource acquisition to others. Prospectorium excels at resource acquisition but will have weaker research. And on the flip side, Scalarium specializes in research but relies on their allies for military support. And that is very much represented in the icons we have. Similar to how a federation will advance or degrade based on its cohesion, these specialist empires improve their abilities based on loyalty, and they will gain additional perks and strengthen their bonuses and penalties 
as they level up through three different tiers, and we saw that before on the previous image. Several agreement terms are locked or have minimum values. For example, a bulwark contract must include basic resource subsidies from their overlord, that means the overlord will be paying their vassal, but they also have to give a defensive pact to their overlord. The Prospectorium must provide a resource tithe to the overlord in exchange for research subsidies. And these minimum terms will ensure that at least some of their deficiencies are covered so they can thrive and fulfill their intended obligations to their overlord. Now, this kind of interesting symbiotic or possibly parasitic relationship will be really, really interesting in both single and I think even more so in the multiplayer games we're going to be getting. But we do in this dev diary get to do a deep dive into one of the different empire types and that is the Prospectorium, the Resource Acquisition Empire. Here is the Norilga Citizen Compact. They are a tier three or level three Prospectorium. So they've unlocked all of their bonuses. I'm not quite sure what's going on with the loyalty. That looks like they're at negative loyalty. So I would assume based on that, that would mean they are losing XP possibly, but, but that's not really been mentioned here. I'm not sure if it's possible to go back down a tier once you've managed to go up a tier through loyalty. So again, you would want to be offering very favorable terms in the beginning uh, to get lots of positive loyalty points. Then later on, you want to renegotiate the terms of the deal and your vassals should pray the deal does not get renegotiated further. For each tier that your Prospectorium gets, you will get some basic bonuses. At tier one, as you can see, your mining station build cost is reduced by 10% and then your output for basically all of your resources except consumer goods it looks like here. So that's energy credits, minerals, alloys, and monthly strategic resources. And of course, for some reason, food isn't included too. That will all get a 10% bonus to output for the empire that is the vassal, the subject. However, they will get a minus 30% monthly research that is that's quite painful I, I i hope that is research output from jobs and not a 40 percent reduction to science on the science screen because if it is the research from jobs that could be offset somewhat by lots of empire bonuses however if it's a minus 40 percent to research speed that is a, a 30 percent even that is a real negative problem as we go up the tiers, we will get further bonuses and penalties. So at tier two, we're basically doubling up what we had before roughly. We're going up to 20% from 10% of all these resource outputs, and we're getting a further 10% reduction to science output. At tier three, your vassal will be getting a whopping 30% bonus to minerals, energy credits, alloys, and strategic resources, but a very unpleasant monthly scientific research of minus 50%. That is quite crippling. I think this will somewhat mean that a Prospectorium Empire is very much going to be stuck at whatever level it is at with scientific research. Um, given that you cannot trade technologies in the game, getting a big monthly science penalty like this is very much going to keep you behind Though I suppose the scientific pact, which will give you 25% extra research speed if you already have the technology, as well as some base research output uh, as well, that could help, but I don't think that's going to help as far as minus 50%. We will have to see these numbers are not final yet, but that's just my initial thoughts. And if you enjoy this video, please prospect that like button. What we just saw was only the base effects from Prospectorium. There are a whole bunch of individual icons that we saw earlier, and they do some unique things too. So at tier one, Prospectorium deposits will give you every, uh, every year, you get a 20% chance of discovering energy credits or minerals as a deposit somewhere in your empire. At tier two, that's including alloys, rare crystals, volatile moats, and exotic gases. And when we finally get up to tier three, it will be possible to find Zro, dark matter, and living metal every year, a 20% chance of something in this group. Now, that could be very, very powerful if you really need dark matter or living metal in the mid to late game as you'll probably be able to make a trade deal with your vassal to trade their dark metal from them these discoveries all produce a special project that can be exploited by a construction ship 
And this also means you want a Prospectorium to have a reasonable amount of space under its control if you want them to keep finding more resources. They will also get further bonuses to Mining Station build cost and Mining Station build speed. There's also something very interesting mentioned here in the midst of these different bonuses. They've not shown us exactly what it will do, but the Overlord will gain a bonus for having at least one advisor of each specialist type. That means if you have each of the specialist empires, you'll get some special bonuses as the Overlord. And we did see in the trailer the Dolphin with the Katana. He was super cool, by the way, and I just want to throw that one in there. Love the Dolphin with the Katana. Um, and the other two aliens, whoever they were, and they were all representing, I think, one of each of these advisors of each specialist type. Additionally, having more than one of each specialist type will not increase the advisory benefit. So for instance, if you have five Prospectoria, you will not get five times the Prospectorium advisory benefit. In the third tier, there is a perk called Prospectorium Supply. It is tied to the Hyper Relay Network. That's, I believe, one of the new mega structures we're getting, or at least mega engineering projects. And they are not going to tell us more about that at the moment. It's very unfortunate. I want to know more about the Hyper Relay Network, but that's being locked away for now. They're just rubbing it in our faces and mentioning it at the moment. In tiers two and three, Prospectorium get unlocked for them the ability to research the rare resource technologies. That's rare crystal mining, moat stabilization, exotic gas extraction, and later on Zro distillation, dark matter drawing, and living metal deposit. This should mean that they're able to mine those special resources if they get them through the prospecting that's going to be going on. However, don't forget that they are getting massive, and I really mean here, massive penalties to their research speed. So possibly they'll never get up to being able to research this, and possibly the AI won't pick it because it won't be weighted towards these technologies. So this is a potential concern. I can see what they're going for, but we'll have to see if it does work out. The governors of a Prospectoria will also get some fantastic traits. All governors gain a random trait. I think this is at tier two. Um, but one of these traits, uh, any one of them are really good. First is Prospectorium Extractor, plus 20% from energy credits from jobs, plus 20% minerals from jobs, plus 20% alloys from jobs. That is insane. Alternatively, Prospectorium Optimizer, minus 15% upkeep from all jobs. And finally, the Prospectorium Refiner. This one's less good, 25% extra output from chemists, gas refiners, and translucers. That's not so good, but those first two are really good. And do you know what's even better than that? When you get to tier three, you'll be able to recruit or trade leaders with Prospectorium traits from your vassals. That means as an overlord, you can get your hands by having a Prospectoria on a governor with plus 20% alloy production. Oh my goodness. That is going straight on an Acumenopolis, an alloy foundry. That is just insane. I mean, that perk alone would make it useful to at least keep one planet of a neighboring empire around and turn them into a Prospectorium just so you can get your hands on that juicy, juicy governor with plus 20% alloy output. Finally, in the tier three, you will be able to get the decision, if you're a Prospectorium, to strip mine. You remove a random agricultural feature and replace it with a strip mine, which is max mining districts plus two. That seems really, really good to me, especially if you're a machine Prospectorium, so you have no need for food anyway. This would be a very, very useful feature to have. Basically, they are saying that internally they have found, this is the developers, that the specialist empires provide an interesting cooperative playstyle where multiple empires can work together to cover for each other's deficiencies. Now that does sound good on paper, but in practice, I don't really think it helps to give someone a minus 50% research output if they're already a bit behind on research. That just sounds super counterintuitive to me. Maybe I'm being a bit mad here, but 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 I'm not quite sure if that's the symbiotic relationship that they're thinking of. I guess we'll just have to see with time. But what do you think about the new changes included in this week's dev diary? Please let me know down in the comments below. There are even more holdings, Overlord holdings, being revealed in today's dev diary. This is part two. Part one was last week's. 
So a question that came up many times last week related to deprioritizing overlord jobs from holdings. Any of these that provide benefits for the overlord behave like criminal jobs and cannot be deprioritized. That does mean though I think that we may be able to do a bit of uh, gaming things here and prevent some of our pops working those jobs because once they're working those jobs they cannot and I really do mean cannot be moved out of them, they are criminals, but there are things we can do at present to keep them out of those jobs, so we'll have to see if it worked well. But what is the first building? What is going on? The Overlord Garrison building is uh, kind of the first building we have here, and it can help your subjects if they're having problems with crime. A strong military presence on your world forces or enforces loyalty, but the populace of the planet might not be very happy about the occupying presence. Basically here, um, you're going to get minus 10% crime plus 0.5 monthly loyalty change, that's very good. And if you put occupying armies on the planet, that will provide an additional 10% crime reduction, 0.5 monthly loyalty, but it will also give minus 5% happiness. And this stacks to a maximum of three times. So you can end up giving them minus 15% happiness. I've noticed a bit of a theme here with these overlord buildings. They provide bonuses to the overlord sometimes and slap the uh, the player or the, the vassal with massive penalties to happiness or amenities or things like that. I'm thinking of the previous building for aristocratic elites. The satellite campus holding produces research for both the overlord and the subject, but it's paid for by the subject. And as you can see here, the subject gets less research than they would get if they were just building basic science jobs. Basic scientists would be producing eight research per category. Here, the total research output is greater, it's 10, but seven of that goes to the overlord and only three stays for the subject. If the planet owner is gestalt, they will also consume energy or minerals as appropriate rather than consumer goods. There are a whole bunch of overlord buildings that are specific to a, an empire civic or origin, and we're going to be getting some previews on those. So as you can see here, we have the recruitment office. If you haven't guessed, that is from the citizen service civic. And it's very important to note here that service does not guarantee citizenship. Basically, this gives the overlord plus 10 naval cap and two recruiter jobs. Those recruiter jobs, uh, they require unity and energy, and they provide defensive armies. The experimental crater was teased a couple of days ago by Stellaris. They put out a picture with something along these lines. Basically, this is if you have the calamitous birth origin, that means you're a lithoid, you can build one of these overlord holdings. The monthly loyalty change is minus one. It produces a whole bunch of science and gives minor jobs on the local planet, producing some minerals. There's also the caution message that incoming colony ships may explode. That is definitely very worrying. And as you can see here, that can cause uh, an asteroid to accidentally crash into the planet and the message says it will take several months to repair the planet. I assume that means we'll get some sort of big blocker that must be paid for and takes quite a long time before, uh, before they can do anything about it. This just seems needlessly painful for any subject, but it is definitely full of flavor. If you are a death cult, you may want to build sacrificial shrines. These are an overlord holding that you get access to if you have the death cult, and it will give the right of the citizens of that planet, of your subject, to become mortal initiates. They will get some uh, research, some science, some unity, and some amenities output. However, the Overlord will be allowed to sacrifice those pops. Now that sounds really useful. That could mean, as a death cult, you no longer have to sacrifice your own citizens, you can sacrifice some foreign citizens and still get all of the benefits. I'm looking at you, Aztecs. Last week we were promised one Overlord holding from a machine empire. They've been very generous though and they've given us two. The first is this distributed processing. Minus two monthly loyalty change, that's quite a big, big problem, but you get four Mind Thrall jobs. Mind Thralls produce research points for their Overlord and they basically don't seem to have any upkeep, except the normal upkeep. What is a Mind Thrall though and what does it do? 
basically you're borrowing some space from the organic brains which are definitely not very efficient that's why they're producing a total of 2.5 research a piece uh, in each category and they will be these mind trolls the text reads a cold structure eclipsing the local region those who work here refuse to elaborate on what they do but no one leaves the experience entirely unscathed this looks very very reminiscent of um, some of the buildings from the Matrix. I'm looking at thinking of some of the, uh, the, the the Matrix, not the city buildings, the machine city, but the machine fields where all of the humans are kept in their red or orange pods. The other machine empire building we get to look at is the Organic Haven. This is basically a little test site where you can show the biopops in your subject empires what a great time they'd have if they were actually in your empire. It gives five biotrophy jobs, increases loyalty, and then in terms of the output, it, I'm not entirely sure what these symbols are here meaning because we seem to have the same symbol twice. One seeming to say that you get plus 0% uh, approval bonus or happiness bonus. The other one saying plus 200%. Um, so we will just have to see exactly what they do. However, we know that biotrophies have insane levels of happiness and they also have quite reasonable political power. That should mean that a rogue servitor nation, which is an overlord, could put these organic havens on their subjects and vastly improve the output of their subjects. It might be possible because there, there should be some number, some level of resource payment to the overlord, where if the overlord takes, say, 5, 10, 15%, I don't know where the exact math will lie yet, but some amount and promises as a rogue servitor to put these organic havens on every planet, the overall production would be greater for both subject and overlord. That kind of interaction I am very much interested in. That may even be a little game breaking, uh, but we'll have to see exactly how it shakes out. From a thematic point of view though, I think that it could be absolutely fantastic. We've got rogue servitors going around and basically showing these biotrophies such a good time that it becomes imperative for you to sign up initially as a vassal and then later on possibly getting integrated and having every aspect of your lives, not just the external politics of your empire, being managed by a rogue servitor. That is a very natural and thematic progression from an independent biological empire into a biotrophy on a planet of a rogue servitor. So I'm very much in favor of this holding. And if you're enjoying this video and other videos on this channel, you can help to support this channel by either becoming a channel member, supporting this channel through Patreon, or purchasing something on the Humble Bundle store. Links to all of these are down in the description below. Until April the 12th, you can get EU4, another Paradox Grand Strategy game, for as little as one euro, or you can get the game along with all of the DLC for under 20 euros on the Humble Bundle store until April the 12th. We have seen the icons for the new Overlord Origins, we're getting five new Origins, now it's time to get some more information on them. Today we're going to be getting a name for them. This is going to be basically clearing up pretty much exactly what it is. We won't know the exact details on the specifics, but it, it points us in a very good direction for our guesswork. And I have to say, a lot of the guesses have been very good. Some of them, I think, less so, however. We've also got a tiny piece of artwork that's associated, so I'll show those off one at a time. First, the supplicant uh, alien or man is called Imperial Fiefdom. There's a beautiful piece of artwork here where you're kind of seeing um, that you are, in essence, I think you are going to be the lower vassal, so you're going to be uh, subject to a more powerful empire. Possibly that could be in reverse. This, though, is definitely the origin which will be giving us a pre-established imperial relationship, somewhat akin to the hegemony start or the uh, common ground start. Teachers of the Shroud, this was, of course, the psionic uh, origin that we did think was coming. We see here in the artwork a couple of aliens doing some Jedi-like powers. And some aliens, which I can only assume are your empire, watching them with all glee, whatever expressions are on their highly pixelated faces. The next one, which a lot of people thought was something to do with the new orbital ring megastructure or planetary structure, we're not quite sure there, 
uh, does not look like that is the case at all. The artwork and the name here, so it's called Slingshot to the Stars, that could still be the orbital ring megastructure or the planetary ring even, but the artwork shows some uh, aliens looking devoutly up at a comet passing across the sky. That would mean, I assume, that there is some star system somewhere that would hold holy significance for your species, and your species is desperately trying to get there, perhaps. That could then mean this icon represents a target, a target on a star. But of course, that is just a theory, a Stellaris theory, and we'll be finding out more in future Dev Diaries. The fourth origin, as a lot of people suspected, is Subterranean. The graphics here and the name of it is literally Subterranean. So I assume this is going to be somewhat similar to the event chain we used to get, where a Subterranean Empire would burrow up out of the ground and do some fancy stuff on the surface. Exactly what this is going to entail, I don't think anyone quite knows yet, but very, very interesting. Finally, the fifth new origin. I speculated this could be some sort of hive-based origin, and I want to say I was right here, though I was completely off the mark. I speculated it might be something to do with cloning or, or something along those lines, a bit like Horatio from Endless Space. It doesn't seem to be anything of the sort. It is the progenitor hive origin. The artwork here is very interesting as well. It looks like we're going to have some sort of massive uh, hive type uh, organism that is then in charge of all the little drones. I, I really don't know what is going to be happening here or what they're referring to with progenitor. Um, it could mean so many different things. I'm very excited for this one as well as some of the or other origins and we are definitely going to be looking forward to finding out more in the coming weeks because they have said they're going to release information on one of every origin or at least a friend of theirs in the community. I don't know exactly what they mean by that but apparently some friends are going to tell us, not the developers themselves, um, what is going on with those origins and preview them along with summarized details in the associated dev diaries.